Good evening, buenas noches, and thank you for tuning in. On behalf of all of us at the locally based, independently owned bookstore, Books and Books in Miami, Florida, and in partnership with Miami Book Fair, it's my pleasure to welcome you to a virtual evening with Armando Correa to discuss In Search of Emma, How We Created Our Family, published by our friends at Harper One. Armando Lucas Correa is a Cuban writer, journalist, and editor who resides in New York. His first novel, The German Girl, is an international bestseller that has been translated to 14 languages and published in more than 20 countries. His second novel, The Daughter's Tale, was published in 2019. Armando is the editor-in-chief of People en Español and the recipient of various Outstanding Achievement Awards from the National Association of Hispanic Publications and the Society of Professional Journalism. To moderate this evening's conversation, we're joined by Mirta Ojito. Mirta is an award-winning journalist and author of Finding Mañana and Hunting Season. A graduate of Columbia University, she has written for the Miami Herald, El Nuevo Herald, and the New York Times. Currently working at NBC News as Senior Director of Standards for Telemundo. Throughout this evening's broadcast, You're invited to ask questions by using the Ask a Question feature at the bottom of the screen, and you can order your copy of In Search of Emma from Books and Books below. We truly appreciate every order and the generous donations from viewers everywhere. And now, without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guests to the virtual stage. Welcome, Armando. How are you, Christina? Good, thank you. Hi, Hi. Mirko. Hi, Hi, Mandy. Hi, I'm so happy to present in search of Emma. Today. Yes, 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 yes. You know, I feel like I, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't feel like I wrote this book, but I feel like <laughs> I know the story. Uh, we have discussed it for so many years, and um, and I read it when it first came out. How many years ago? The first edition. 2009. It was called. 2009. Yeah. Incredible, but. Even though I feel like I know the story, of course, I've known you for a long time, uh, that's no secret, and that I read the first book, I was surprised to see two things. And perhaps it's because now I'm reading it with more care. One, that it reads at times like a thriller, uh, not like a memoir. <laughs> I mean, even the titles of the chapters, I'm just going to read a few. Fear, The Void, a broken heart, angel of the waters, everything changes, the promised land, the presence of God, the first accident, the connection, the last trip, the day before and meeting Emma. I mean, just when I read the chapter titles, I'm one of those people who reads everything in a book. Um, I was like, wow, this is like a thriller, not like a <laughs> memoir. Uh, so that really surprised me. And, and the other thing is that there were some nuggets of information um, that I frankly didn't know about. And I'm going to begin with perhaps the one that surprised me the most. Um, though I imagine it might be painful for you, but that's why we write memoirs to suffer even more. Um, and that is... And I'm going to read this a little bit so people understand the context. Okay. It says, uh, this is in the, pro the new preface of this book, the prologue. Today, I observe the three of you, your children, walking by my side, almost reaching my height. And I'm thrilled to listen to an aerospace engineer, the second a vet, the other civil engineer. I'm sure that's already changed, but anyway. <laughs> Each day, I am more convinced that you are ready to face life, but I must admit that despite seeing you happy, I can't help but feel an uncontrollable fear. I look back and I can still hear the lurking voices. And here are the voices. Those who question why we brought you into the world. Those who said you weren't our children. Those who looked at you with pity those who turned their backs on us, those who refused to baptize you, 
those who distanced themselves, those who said they would rather die than have two dads. I mean, I have to say, Mandy, when I read that, and you know, we're in 2021, and I know that Emma is 16 already, right? She's going to be 16 in November. She's going to be 16. So, so maybe this is 16 years old. But tell me more about those questions. I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah, and let me tell you, all these questions, they are real. You know, we're I know. And I, I, I remember, uh, you know, I am not a religious person, but I am Catholic by my family. And when we have Emma, we want to baptize her. You know, I was baptized. My sister, you know, because she was born during the 60s, late 60s, and she was impossible to baptize in Cuba during that moment. It was almost illegal. And, mm -hmm. and then we want to baptize my daughter. And, and when we went to a Catholic church in Miami, the priest said to us that he can do it, but he can only put on the, you know, on the announce and the papers and the program that they prefer only one father. And we said, no, we're not gonna do that. And then we have to wait until we have the twins. And I remember uh, going in Pasadena to a beautiful Methodist church and we met the, the, the you know, I think it's a priest, I don't know how it's called, the mm -hmm. guy in the Methodist church. And he said, no, no, I am happy to baptize your children. And we baptized the three of them at the same day. In Pasadena, California? In a Methodist, beautiful Methodist uh, church. And with the both name, uh, you know, my partner and I on the program. Yeah. That's that fantastic. happened. And, and, and the, the more dramatic one, it, it was one of our friends uh, as a boy, I think he was like a seven years old or eight years old, the same age as like my twin. And he told that to Anna, I prefer to die instead to have two dads. The boy. The boy. The boy right. said that to, to Anna. And Anna, you know, Anna, you know Anna. Yeah. She's very like, a, you know, that's your problem. It's not my problem. Go ahead and die. <laughs> yeah. And and you know, one day, you know, she told me during the dinner, and you know, Gonzalo, and Gonzalo was like a man. He was ready to talk to, to you know, uh, his parents. But you say, Gonzalo, that was like a year ago, and you know, move move on. Maybe the child is, has another perspective. And, but that's real, you know, and, and I know it's hard. They are my children, you know. Of course, of course. So um, do you think that, um, and after reading this book and all the travails and everything you went through to get your children, but specifically Emma um, in this book, do you think things have changed? If you were doing that now, would it be easier, cheaper, more acceptable? Of course, you know, when I tried to become a parent, you know, a father, I started with the uh, adoption. You know, I, I, we want to adopt a kid and we love, you know, the, the old system for adoption. I am a big promoter for adoption, but I, I, I was living in Florida at that moment. I was, uh, you know, working with you at the Herald mm -hmm. and in Florida, it was illegal to adopt. They created a law, I think it was 1977 and, and when we moved to New York, we read an article about surrogacy and, and said, okay, maybe this is a way for me to go. And we're talking about 1990, it was 1998, and I started the process. And to have an idea, I have my daughter in 2005. And surrogacy, it was illegal in Europe at that moment. But, you know, I found that California was one of the most open and friendly state to do that right now for example for adoption all the state you know it's legal right now to adopt a child from the same uh, sex parents or whatever it's called and but surrogacy uh, is not legal in all the states you know it's and not it's not you know for example I, I know Nebraska for sure is is illegal Louisiana Michigan of course California Nevada Washington uh, Maine, they are the, the most friendly state for a state. You can do it in New York with a, a couple of restrictions. And and it's hard. It's hard, but it's easier right now. I, I, I right. remember, and, and I have an anecdote, when we, I, I have Emma, uh, we were living in Miami at that moment, and 
I, I went to the social security office in Calle Ocho. Mm -hmm. and, and I went with my the, the birth certificate and I went to this office with all, all these Cuban refugees around there. And behind the glass, it was a woman talking over the microphone. I said to me, you have to put the name of the mother. And I said, she doesn't have the mother. You know, the birth certificate from California said father Armando Lucas Correa, mother unknown. That's just that's one of the mechanisms that they had. And they <laughs> over the microphone, she screamed, Hey, we have a guy here who want me to process all the paper for the care without a mother. <laughs> You know, someone invited me to go inside. These people called Washington, D.C. They talked to the, their boss, and the boss said, if you have a legal birth certificate, you have to process the social security. For the twins, I decided, let me do it in California. That is easier, you know, it's, it's another kind of state. And I did it for the twins. I did it there without any issue. And also, all three of them were born in California, so it yeah, makes sense. born in San Diego, California. And uh, the doctors, you know, the agency, the lawyers, all of them, they were there. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the process. You've talked at length in the book about your fears. There were many, many fears mm -hmm. in different moments. I mean, I can only imagine because just, you know, as a mother myself, the process of waiting for a child is fraught with so many things. And those are the ones that you can that you think you can control. In your case, you had so many variables, I cannot imagine. But of all the fears that you had, what was the worst fear? What, what did you fear the most? Uh, for me, it was dealing with the unknown. You know, I have to deal with a lawyer that I talk over the phone, and with agency, with people that I don't know. Mm -hmm. And think about it. Forget about the egg donor, that the egg donor is, is like, a, you know, she's donating an organ, something like that. But the surrogate mother, she's someone who's going to have your child and you, you met once. Once? You only met her once? Only once, yeah. Uh, you, you go through a process uh, over the phone, all the papers, all the tests, DNA tests and psychological tests, and then you have a meet. You have to meet her. Then I went to the, it was in La Mesa in, in San Diego. A restaurant? No, no, no. The town is called La Mesa. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. And then uh, it was a small house. We went there. We talked for over 15 minutes. Was it her house? No, it was the agency house. Yeah. Okay. The, the house is a real house. The agency is run by this woman who was a surrogate. And mm -hmm. you know, she run the business from there. And then uh, when we talk to her, and, it, and, and this is another problem, it's hard to get a surrogate who wants to work with a, a, a gay parents, you know, a gay couple. That's really hard to find someone. Do you think it still is right? It's hard to find? Uh, yes, yes. If you go oh. to agency, you, you always find a couple of them, but you know the people prefer like a, a regular couple. And then she told me, that she's never going to say no to a gay couple because she's the daughter of a, a you know, a black guy with a white yeah. Gay woman. Yeah, and, her racial mix is really and, interesting. And, and, you know, and, and she has children from the same way and she doesn't want to be rejected because they are different. You know? And she, you know, she stole my heart at that moment and we have a great relationship until today. She was the surrogate mother for my twins and we're always in contact with her She's have you ever visit her at her home say it again have you ever visited her at her home oh, yeah, yeah. she moved uh -huh. a couple of times and we visited her when we both with the twins they play together she has like a three kids now and she wow. she adopted uh, two kids more you know we send clothes to them gonzalo is always sending clothes from the twins to uh, her adopted children She's a great woman. And She's a very interesting person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that was your biggest fear. But while you were writing the book, what was the most difficult part for you to, to write about? Yeah. The yeah, one I, that really had you. you know, yeah. 
uh, uh, you know, it, it, this is my most personal book, of course, yes. and I never thought I, I write. And I, I remember that uh, uh, an editor from HarperCollins came to my office in 2007, I think, at People in Español, and I thought he was interested in publishing a book uh, about legendary Hispanic celebrity, but he actually wanted to talk me into writing a book about how I had my daughter via sur surrogacy, and it was in panic with that. Uh, I was shocked. I uh, I usually didn't, those years, don't speak or write about my personal life. <laughs> it took him like a while to convince me. But I agreed to do it. You know why? Because I, I when I went over notes, uh, I've been keeping through how the process, I discovered that I had extensive uh, records of conversation I had with my family over the years. Uh, and, and and I was impressed. You know, I, I, I didn't know I have all these notes. And it, it was not like a diary, but even more more about the all the money that I spend every time. And But I have dialogue with uh, Gonzalo's mother in Cuba, with my mother the first time that I talked to her. I don't know why I have all those notes. And, and 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 when I see that I have a lot of material, I said yes to René Alegría. He was the, the editor at that moment. And then, uh, how am I going to write this book? And I said, if this it has to be a dialogue with Emma, it has to be like a long letter to Emma. And at the end, it was more, I, I think it was more like, I don't know how to explain that. It was more like a, it was something that I need to do. Uh, it was like a feel free talking about this story. We have another issue. You know, I work for people in Espanol. I was the editor in chief at that moment. I need to get an approval from my bosses, uh, the editor in chief of Time Mega at that moment, and Martha Nelson, my boss. And because People in Espanol is directed to, you know, Hispanic in U.S. 60% of them, they're Mexican. Most of them, they're conservative and very Catholic. And, and we were afraid that it's going to be something against the brand. And my, my boss said, no, you have to do it. This is your personal life. This is important, Armando. And, I, and when I had the book, everybody was in panic. We have to do like <laughs> PR control. And I remember when we presented uh, the book in the show de Cristina in Univision, in a national TV, that we cried, Gonzalo and I, a lot. We had this sort of a uh, pregnant with the twins with us in the show. And during my radio national tour, I never received any complaint from from a reader, for a you know, for a user from the website, because most of the reader from people in Spanish, they're women, they're mother, and mm -hmm. they were they they were very impressed to find a father dedicated to the children, and and at the end, you know, my book, I know we are to that, we're a gay couple having children, but it's about having a child, you know. And, and so that's a beautiful answer, but that is not the answer to my question. My question was. <laughs> what was the most difficult part for you to write? But I, I you know, <laughs> or maybe, or maybe the difficulty wasn't in the writing, but in getting no, no, through the was, obstacle in your head. You know, I, I, we're, we are journalists at the same time, and I was, I, I remember, I was reading Joan Didion, the the book about when she, her husband died. Joan Didion. Oh yeah, the year of magical thinking. Yes, and then this is a book about death. And my book was about life, but it was talking about sickness and procedure. And, and it, the book helped me a lot when I was, and I was crying all the time reading uh, her book. And I was crying when I was writing. But for wow. me, you know, I think the most difficult part of something that I always conscious when I was writing the book is that my daughter someday is gonna read it. Yes. And I was, you know, very conscious about that. Right now, we were waiting uh, to have a copy in English. You know, she's bilingual, but she preferred to read in English. Right. And 
she's going to have the book this weekend and let's see what happens when she's reading. Yeah. She but I, read that it. was my I mean, big bigger fear. Yeah. Given who she is, she might not read it. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe that is something. She something. might dump you for Anna Karenina. I mean, it just, <laughs> that's just the way it is, Mandy. <laughs> right now. <laughs> what, um, have you ever thought of writing the story of Anna and Lucas as well? Or is the story too similar? Yeah, I think it's the same story. And Anna, that is, he's always been telling me, when you're going to do, you know, in search of Anna and Lucas. Right. Uh, when this edition had the opportunity to talk to both of them at the beginning and the end, mm -hmm. uh, I asked all the, you know, my whole family at, at the end of the book, we had a letter to, to them. I saw that, yes. Requested letters to Anna and Lucas too. Yeah. Then we have like a a whole book, but uh, when Emma was like a three years old, that uh, we were going to Disney, and we were talking about my mother. Gonzalo was talking about her mother, his mother, and uh, Anna, uh, Emma uh, said, "Who is my mother?" And then you know we were in panic. We explained that she has to that, and she said, "In the morning, when she was three, uh, I want to have a mom." And then we say, okay, my my sister, you know, you love. Uh, Who said this, Anna or Emma? Emma, 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 Emma was like a three years old. And then he said, no, no, I love my aunt, but my aunt is my aunt. You mm -hmm. want to be married to be your mother, your surrogate mother can be your mother. You want to? I said, no, 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 she's married. And 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 then I I create a book like a picture book in search of Emma with all the picture, the whole process. And, and I remember those years that, uh, that she told me that it was her favorite book and I have to read it every night. And then with the twin, I did the same. We have In Search of Anna, In Search of Luca, and the three of them, they have their books. Did Anna and Lucas ever ask you the same question, who's my mother? No, no, no. And they, they grew up, you know, knowing uh, their story. They know that they have to that. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I have been invited to to their school to explain the kind of family that we have mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from the friends. Right now, I, I, I don't think, well, they're not going to let me do it because right now they are, they're, well, the twins are going to be teenagers and Emma and I said never think about it to do that. No, When I presented right. my novel, the German girl in, in, at her school in Fieldstone, she preferred to go to a field trip to a state during my presentation there. Hmm. Tell me, um, I want to go back to something that you have mentioned sort of in passing, but I think it must have been a hard moment when, when Emma asked, who is my mother? Were you prepared for that question or were you sort of winging it at the moment? No, we were not prepared. My mother almost had a heart attack. Gonzalo was driving. I was called uh, because, you know, she was too small. Yeah. And playing. Better. Right, but a three is complicated. And it's really hard. And then we're starting off with, uh, offering her mothers if you want to have, you know, if you want to have a mother, let me, this is the woman that I have around me that can be your Pick from this. <laughs> yeah. But in the end, she said, no, I want my two dads. Exactly. You know, you know, because, you know, she's very close to my sister. But and they have a great relationship and, and Emma with my mother, they have, you know, they are very close, but, you know, they have a role. And I think, you know, right now that's not an issue for, for them. Right, right. So given that this is a second edition of the book, but also the first time that it comes out in English, right? In uh -huh. English, it's the first edition. Uh, did you change much from one book to the other? I clean a little. Uh, I think that the first one, it was too emotional, mm -hmm. too much sometimes. Interesting. And I, you know, and, and you know, every time that you write, you learn and you, you know, I, we hope to be a better writer every year. And then I, I cling a little <laughs> book. Um, I want to talk about, I told you that there were some nuggets of information here that surprised me. Mm -hmm. um, on page... 19, I think, is where you say, uh, I can't find it now, but I think you said maybe someplace else. Oh, here we go. Um, 
Now we know him better and love him, thanks to Emma, which I thought um, was a beautiful line. And this is talking about your father. Was that in the original version of the book? I think so, yeah. And, and you know, I, I, my father is a great father uh, to his children with his new wife, but uh, we grew up with our father. My mother was a very independent woman. She decided to move to Havana. We were from Guantanamo, go to college, became an engineer. And then we saw our father like, uh, you know, in, in big events, in maybe one Christmas. Yeah. And then we, we lost contact with him completely. But he's a great guy and he's a great father to, uh, you know, his three daughters. Have you seen him again after that visit? Well, then when I decide to hide a half Emma, I initiate the whole process to invite my father to to Miami at that moment, and and I keep it secret to the whole family, and and then he arrived and and I have picture, you know, because I I want Emma to have picture with. Uh, right, but I'm saying after that visit, did you see him again? Oh well, yeah, a second visit before the 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 twins were born. We were living in New York. He stayed with us in New York, and then it was really hard. Right now he's eighty-seven, and you know, oh. and he's fine, but you know he's really old and yeah, it's difficult for him to travel. Exactly, yeah, That's and well. get the papers right now is really hard. Yeah. So you were talking before um, about being two fathers, and I have to tell you, um, it is very clear to me from the book and from knowing you everything that you did to get those children and everything that you've done since you've gotten them. I mean, everything that you continue to do for them. My mother, whom, as you know, is hypercritical, says that she's never seen better fathers than the two of you, better parents than the two of you, you and Gonzalo. So that's uh, that for me is high praise. Um, but my question is, that's what you've done for them. What have the children done for you? Oh, uh, you know, uh, we are Cuban exile. We have to start from zero here. Uh, uh, and for me, starting in the Herald, it was something I worked with you and learned a lot. And and for me, it was a big, you know, a big accomplishment. Then become a, a reporter at the Herald, came from Cuba. And then starting at people in Espanol from zero and create like a, the biggest, Hispanic magazine right now in US. I am the editor in chief. I published two novels and you know they are international bestseller. But you know what is the, my biggest accomplishment? My children. By far, you know. And um, for me this is the something that I'm really proud and I and it's like when you have a dream and the dream becomes true. And you have it in front of you and you're thinking every day and every morning and seeing growing up that they are real you know how have they changed you oh a lot i i since i had when i had emma i cry for everything you know? mm. and i cry if you tell me about your pets your dog your whatever story i I try writing my novel. I try in, in the movie reading, and I try in national television talking about Emma. Right. That, that, that's my fear, you know. For example, I never read frag, uh, you know, fragment for in search of Emma. Never, because every time that I gonna read, I know. I cry, and I decide yeah. I never gonna read from my books. I have to tell you that I think they also made you less private, more open mm -hmm. uh, from the Armando I met mm -hmm. to the Mandy I know now. Uh, there's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And I think, I used to think it was because of people that you had, had to develop that persona because of you had, you were the director, you were in charge, you needed to be. But I think it was the kids. Mm -hmm. I think it was after you had Emma. There was a radical change. And, 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 you know, I, I think I am like a shy person. And, and Junior, 
you know me very well working at the Herald and very quiet and private and silent all the time. It was like, uh, you know, like uh, too much, you know, sometimes. But I think my children, you know, when you have, when you have children, uh, you know, what is a real problem? The, you know, I, and I explain that in my office all the time. You know, don't, don't be worried about something that- Right, you right. Know, you don't, you know, you, you have problems when you have children and you have really worry about yes. everything, you know. The yes. rest, you can find a solution immediately. Yeah. This is this is so true. This is so true. All right. I think I should go to the questions now. Do I see any questions? You're supposed to go to where it says ask a question and I don't see a number next to it. So does that mean that nobody, is anybody out there? Maybe, maybe we've been talking alone. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> you. You know, I, I know Ana Messiana told me she's going to be watching. So yeah. maybe it's just you and me. <laughs> All right, there's a question here. Oh, no. That is a remind the audience, which I just did. So, no, maybe there's another one. Let's see. No. All right. I don't see. Let's see. Ah, okay. So somebody's asking, I don't know who, because it doesn't say the name, but what are your hopes for this new edition? Well, uh, after the German game, but by the way, I want to, to make a parenthesis here. I think I, 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 I became a published uh, novelist because of the In Search of Emma. When I published In Search of Emma in Spanish, uh, Johanna Castillo, uh, an editor at that moment in Atria, and Simon and Schuster read the book and she told me you have to write a book. You have to write oh, a book. Oh, lovely. Uh, and, and then I said, uh, Johanna, every writer has a novel uh, within all the time. You know, I'm trying to write a novel. And then we, I remember having a, a lunch with her and I presented all my research about the St. Louis. And, a, you know, a couple of days later, we were signing a contract with the German girl. So it was and because of that book. Exactly, and then I thought it was because of the high cost of New York schools, Mandy. No, no, no. <laughs> maybe to help. That. Maybe too. And then uh, I became a published novelist, and 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 the idea to have all this reader that I have with the German girl, I think the book could, could be more, you know. And I, I and I know for sure when I have, I publish the book in Spanish, I help a lot of people. I'm not gonna mention any celebrity now because um, they are private, but they they call me to know about the process, and some of them they have their children via surrogacy. So part of the idea is to have something for your daughter that she can refer to, and yeah. your children, and the other to help people understand the process. Oh, yeah. People who might want to have children. And I, and I can help to understand the kind of family that we have, and and every time that I talk about the book I, I want to explain if you go to my house it's going to be a house like every house with children with a lot of terrible plastic uh, toys and painting and boards you know and, and your life is around that going to museum to theater yes. to the poor you're a regular family we don't have any difference with another mother and father family Let's see, there's another question. We have seven questions, I think. Yes. Oh, Ana Vesiana wants to know, Ana Vesiana Suarez, and she would know, how is Emma as a teenager? Has it been difficult for you? <laughs> well, all the, all the children, they're difficult, but you know, uh, she's a smart girl and, and, uh, and you know, you know, <laughs> I, I think I, I Make me to know everything about uh, my children, but uh, she's she's a smart girl. She reads a lot. We were talking the today that she's reading. Today we're talking about Anna Karenina from Tolstoy, and I don't know where she got the book, and and she's always reading uh, great books. And right now she wants to go to medical school, and she's going to one of the best high school in in in, in the country, not only in New York. Yes. And, and the she's same very, high school where Lin Manuel Miranda went. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and and you know she's a shy girl. I I I 
waiting to be for her more open i i see me you know i all the time that i see her i i, I you see yourself in her yes i know what you're trying to say yes you know, she's really shy she's she she lives in her world and the twins they are more open i think the boys is 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 is, a, is really friendly and anna is a character you know anna is really funny and smart and the good thing you know, they are a good they are good kids they are good at school and I see that you're sitting between two pictures. I see Emma is on your left and the twins are on your right, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's see what other question that we have here. But she's a good reader. And, and Anna, I think Anna is going to love to hear that. All right. Oh, this is a great, great question. Would you ever consider writing a children's book? Like the ones you like the ones you wrote for your kids. I think uh, that's a great question, yeah. Mandy. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. And Anna and Lucas are they are all the time telling me that I have to write a book for children about this story to make a new one. Yes. And I said when I, I was presented the book in the Boston Public Library, everybody asked the same. We need to, you know, but for me, I'm, I'm more than happy to do it. This is a question more from, from my agent, Johanna, and the editors at Hopper Ones that, that I love to No, do. no, but just, just start writing a proposal tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll happen. The answer is yes, it's going to happen. Is your family complete? Will you have more kids? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no, no. I, I, when when we have Emma, I think we're going to have only one child, and we were happy to have one after we survived the whole process. And then when she was two years old, she told us, "I want to have a brother and a sister." And you know, and, and we have my daughter when we we, we were in the forties. I said, "Okay." Uh, I talked to Gonzalo, and I said, "We have eight embryos frozen. I think this is the opportunity, and I'm paying." for the storage of the embryo for years, you know, for two years, I think this is the time, let's try. And the good thing it was, the process was fast. We, we didn't have any accident and uh, we had less stress because I, I say, okay, if happened, we're gonna happy. If not happen, it's gonna be fine. And I travel like a couple of times only to San Diego. We have the same surrogate mother, Mary was open to do it. And then, and then when we had the pregnancy positive and and we went i went to the office and the doctor said i can see here baby a when he said that i said he's gonna say that there is a baby b oh my god and then i i couldn't take any picture video and and i called my family immediately we're gonna have twins and then they you know, Mary told me it's going to be a boy and a girl. We were happy and more embryos. And what happened to the other embryos? No, because when you try, you have to open the frost, a couple of them, and they die. They are like a, like a three in each, whatever it's called. Yeah. And then so there were. Yeah. Oh, interesting. That oh, was, our family is complete for sure. What? um. Remind me how much the twins weighed when they were born. Say it again. Were they little when they when the twins were born? Were they very little? How much did they weigh? I forget that. Oh, okay. uh, it was thirty-five weeks. That it is a, it says regular time for the twins. It's not premature. And Luca was six point one, and Anna five point nine. I think the boys they are immature always, and he was he was he had to stay like a couple of weeks in Nico. Even right? though he was heavier, he had to stay. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. All right, let's see. Um, oh, somebody wants to know if your children consider themselves, Caridad wants to know if your children consider themselves Cuban Americans. 
that's uh, of course, you know, and, and Anna is the only one who questions all the time why she has to go in a school. You know, someday they have to uh, go to the stage with their flag, and they, they she has to use the flag. Lucas is a, a is a proud Cuban. You know, Lucas is all the time with all SOS Cuba. And, you know, he loved to be a Cuban. But the funny thing is my daughter did the test today, the, you know, the P, pre- PSAT, PSAT, yeah. Emma she, did. And, yeah, and she wrote that she's Cuban. When they have to define what is she, you know, if she, we suppose she's gonna be Lat, you know, Latina or Hispanic, she wrote Cuban. Of course, wow. they feel, you know, we live in a Cuban- uh, Household. Yeah. Cuban family. When my kids were little, somebody asked that, and Juan Arturo said, I'm Cuban because I like rice and beans and I speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, they love uh, rice and beans. Black. And black. <laughs> All right, let's see what do we have now. Um, or oh, do you have. Um, this is the last question I have from the audience, so please don't tell me you're here. Some pe people have been saying they're here, but they haven't asked any questions. So go ahead and ask questions because this is the last question. Um, any advice for other couples who want to follow in your footsteps? Uh, I think I learned that you have to be patient, that you never give up, and, and remember when I started the process, and it's in the book, it's nothing that because I don't want to talk about money. But when I started the process, I was like a, a senior writer, you know. I am I was not the editor in chief and I have to sold my apartment in New York to cover all the expenses. And at the end, Emma, the making of Emma, that it sound like it's in a lab and it was in a lab cost a, a $125,000 that I didn't have. I have to sell my apartment. $125,000? Yeah. Uh, the twins, I, I, did, I don't know because, you know, I follow whatever is going to happen. Um, but uh, you never give up. You know, uh, if you buy some time to spend a lot of money, you have debt and you survive, then why not having the, the most important thing in your life? You know? and, and for me, I was clear, I'm going to have my daughter and I'm, I'm going to become a father and I'm going to survive all the accidents, the fears and and the money. And I have my daughter, I have my twins and, and we survive. Perseverance and never give up. Yeah. So never give up, have a lot of money, <laughs> sell your apartment. <laughs> persevere um you know it's interesting that you say you made it in a lab because i was thinking for for those who say this is a unnatural or or strange way of having a child um the search that you did for the woman who donated the egg was frankly the kind of search everybody should do before they get married. I mean, and before they procreate, not just have get married, before they procreate. I mean, the way you really try to think, is this somebody that I would like to talk to? Is this somebody that I sh that I can make a connection with? I think you title the chapter, The Connection. Yeah. And that is something that if anything, you were more careful about the process of procreating than most people are. People just fall in love and have a kid or have so never, an accident, but you, you don't go into the DNA uh, your past. And your I mean, you you DNA. went into a kind of a extreme uh, vetting. Is this the right mother or egg donor for my kid? And that was just extraordinary. It's almost like we should all do that. You know, is this a kind of father that I want from my kid? <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, for women, because it really was extraordinary 
how you did that and how you were teasing out meaning in her answers. I mean, if she liked this, if she's like this, I mean, really how she presented herself to the world was important to you, that she was sure of herself, that she knew what she wanted. And she was what, 23, I think, the egg donor? Well, 21, 21. 21, 21. Was, but already a very uh, fixed you know, when personality. You go, when, yeah, that, that's gonna sound weird, but when I went to the agency, to the egg donor agency, they show you a tons of pictures of an egg donor. All of them, they are beautiful. All of them, they are in college. All of them, they want to go to a master degree or to the Sorbonne to study a doctorate. And and ninety percent of them, they show you a picture in a prom with the flowers. No. Very, and I said, you know, really? I said. I'm not going to start with all these women in the prom pictures. I hate them. Why could they do that? That's crazy. That's like the worst then I picture found, ever. Found hours and we were in, you know, you know, we have an accident. We found one that she didn't have any eggs and have, we have to go to the other one. And the first one, the emotional connection that we found, they get one of the great mother, it was from the same town in Spain that my grandmother. They were like Irish, but you know, they, she has a grandmother from Vigo. I said, okay, this is, has to be mine. No? And then the second one, uh, do you know what was the connection? She loved Ana Mendieta. The I know, I know. Then, uh, for me, those the Gonzalo, this is it. And, and then uh, she's beautiful. So explain to the no. audience who Ana Mendieta was for those who don't know. Yeah, Ana Mendieta it was a Cuban painter living in Soho and she, kill herself. Some of them, they said that the husband killed her. And she, during the period that I have having Emma, she have like a big exhibition at the Whitney Museum. And she always worked with the body, the blood. Oh, the her, and, you know. mm -hmm. and she had a deep connection to Cuba as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge connection. That's, that's really amazing. I think we have another question. Um, Let's see. Oh, does the egg donor ever interact with the children? And if so, how does that work? Yeah, no, that's that's part of the law. So like the, the, the surrogate mother, it has to be a mother to be a surrogate mother. They have to have a child. That's part of the law. And uh, and you, you you can meet her, you can, you can go to the birth, uh, to the hospital with her, everything with the egg donor. It's like a sperm donor. You you even for the sperm donor, you don't sometimes you don't have a picture. You have the DNA test, the psychological test, and the you know the height and the weight. And the egg donor, you have pictures, but you never know her name or nothing about her. You know, it's more about the details. And, but because we have an accident with her, and she want, you know, I, I'm very sensitive to war, and she sent me a beautiful email. And, and and I say okay, and we're gonna work together, but I need to meet you in person. And she said yes. And then I we fly to San Francisco. Uh, we have together, and I have a small video with her. And we have of course we have to change her name in the book because you know, she's private. And and she told me that when the Emma was born, she, she wanted me to see a picture of her. And then I sent a picture, and she said that she they have she had the same eye. Oh. But and and I hope she's not gonna listen. But I'm a journalist, and I follow her in social media. And, oh. and I think she followed me too. And and nobody knows her name, even even Gonzalo, you know, in social media. And 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 I'm trying to keep her very private because this is a very a delicate thing for the donors. And in one of the story, I, I, you know, I saw this story when I listened to her, I almost died. It was the same voice of Emma. Oh my God. It was like, you know, it was the same tone. It was the same. I said, Gonzalo, you have to listen to this. And he, he was in shock. Wow. Wow. Amazing. You know, you, um, I think you begin the book by saying that you always wanted to be a father. Um, so I have to wonder, 
Do you think you would have done this even if you had been alone without Gonzalo? Or do you think the fact that you had a partner is what prompted you to complete your family? Uh, uh, for sure, I'm going to do it by myself. I have to do it. You know, I am lucky that I have Gonzalo and we have been together for 30 years. And he's an excellent, as you know, he's a great father. Totally. And He's, he's, he's completely involved in school, in play, you know? uh, and, and, and he's, he's more strict than me. He's all the time fighting with the kids for the perfection and the classes. I am more relaxed, and, but I am, of course, uh, that was even, even when I started the process, I, I was the one who wants to be a father, and, you know, for him, he was not that he didn't want to, but it was more you are spending a lot of money and time in something that is almost impossible. Yeah. The dream and and then we when he saw that we were close, he was involved completely in the whole process. You mentioned the word dream and you've said that you dreamed of Emma. What what did you dream in that dream? It was in Italy, no? It, I was in Italy. It was the last year of nine, you know the last century and I, I I saw Emma, you know, I I, I saw a baby, you know, and and and, and during that those years it was a crazy year for me because you know I, I, I even I explained that I'm Catholic. I I went to church because they are museum but you know in Cuba it, it, it was really a problem. It was a religious person. And then when I, I was talking to the doctor, the the you know the Geologist, he explained to me, Armando, I can, I can find the perfect sperm for you. I can find the perfect egg. I can do uh, the fertilization. We can get embryos with the perfect division. You don't have to be paired, no impaired. Okay. And I can do the smoothly transfer. But that embryo became a, a, a human being. Is in the hand of God. When he said that, I I I did the confirmation at the church. I went Thursdays and Sunday. I I went to my all the classes with the priest, and I decided to go to the big mass in in the in the Saint Peter in Rome. Uh -huh. Because the last night is is once every one thousand years they open the main door, and it's the mass for the children. You went to that? I went that. Everybody, Gonzalo and the family, they were running around and I was fighting for a seat with a couple of nuns that they want me to move from my seat in the middle of the mass and I did the whole process. And, Fabulous. Yeah. And, so the dream, you dreamed? And then that night, that night when we went back to the hotel, I, I, I saw my daughter. Yeah. And I didn't know it was a boy or a girl. And I feel everybody smiling, and I saw me with her, and and I said, I'm gonna have the baby. You know, did I, it, I, did I it look like her? Know. When no, Emma was born, did it look like her? I, I, it was not that kind of detail. I feel I you know, the warm body with me. Oh, and, yeah. And I and I remember that, uh, you know, you know. That sounds cheesy, but I said, I'm, I'm going to be your father and we're going to be together forever. You know, I remember that. Oh. And I promised that the day that I'm going to have my daughter, I'm going to say the same. How did you decide to call her Emma? Well, uh, I was obsessed uh, when I was a child with Madame Bovary, the Flaubert. Mm. And, and I told before that when I left Cuba, I left all my books. And my grandmother uh, sent me uh, tons of boxes with pictures, everything that I requested, my grandmother. And I, one day she said, someone is coming to Miami. And, and he told, she told me that she can bring only one book. And I was thinking, okay, right, when I ask for a big one, I got a small one. And I said, okay, no, I want me Madame Bovary. You know? It was an old... <laughs> yeah, but it was your book. But it was my mind, and I remember when I read it, I was like a 12 years old and drinking vinegar like, like Emma Flaubert to lose weight. And and then Gonzalo, uh, because, you know, Emma is going to have my last name, and she's going to decide what is the name. And the day 
that I went, uh, they decide that I, I am fertile, I can have all the whole process. I was crossing from the east side to the, the west side and in the big fountain that is there, the like sculpture for Emma stopping. And then I said, I explained everything to Gonzalo. Gonzalo loved the name of Emma. Nobody in my family wants Emma. Sounds like an old lady, they said. Oh. And then, and Emma. Yeah. It's a great name. And, and Anna, Emma, but Emma doesn't like it. Emma said, okay. She doesn't. Well, she said, every time that I go to school, I have to be Emma C because we have like a three Emma. And oh, Emma that is. Because of friend, you know, Jennifer Aniston has a baby and the baby is called Emma. And, but you know, that she is said, the problem with Lucas. Emma, Isabel, you can be getting easy, you know, easy, whatever you want. <laughs> no, but she's joking. Yeah. And Anna and Lucas, how did you decide on those names? Well, uh, uh, Lucas, I always, uh, you know, that's, that was my decision because it was my second name. My name is Armando because I am the Armando the fourth in my family's uh, uh, father's side. And because I was born uh, October 18, uh, next month is going to be my birthday, is the St. Lucas Day. And my I grandpa, didn't know that. St. Lucas is October 18. Yeah, and those are my ah. grandfather for my mother's side. And he said he was to be a Lucas. And I love Lucas, even when I came to the United States, I'd say, I say, I want to become Lucas Correa, but you know, and then I have my Lucas now. And Anna, uh, I think it was together. We, we love to have name for my our kids because we are a bilingual family that the, the name you can pronounce in the same, you know, in Spanish right. and English, same. Right. and it's easy to write and, yeah. Um, I should say, for those who don't know, that your birthday coincides with Gonzalo's birthday. So you both have your birthday, October 18th. And by the way, Lucas is named Lucas Gonzalo. And, you know. That's sweet. Very sweet. All right. The last question, which I somehow skipped it before, but I also think it's a good way to wrap it up, is um, someone wants to know, for from the two of us, what does a young journalist have to do to achieve the level of success that the two of us have achieved? So you go first, Mandy. Milta. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I started in Cuba. I went to college in Cuba. And when I came here, last, like all of you, we have to start from zero. I have to learn a language. And and I worked really hard. And you know me, when I when we started in the, at the Herald, I was clerk reporter, checking, writing obits, and checking all the hours and overtime for the reporter. And all of them, they want to leave at 6 p.m. And answering the phones. And answering the phone and, and your assistant, you know. Yeah, I did <laughs> memos. Then, and, and then when everybody wants to leave at 6 p.m. and there is a big story that I have to write, I say, I can do it. Nobody wants to write a, a work during the weekend. I said yes. And six months later, when I started at the Herald, I became a reporter. And writing for the old, you know, the, the front page or the section. And I, I'm a workaholic and, and I love, I for me, it's like a, a going back to college and learn a lot from you and from Andres and, and all my editors there. And then I moved to New York because New York was like a, my dream to, you know, for me, <laughs> leaving Cuba, I, I was living in New York. And I, I remember when Angelo Figueroa, the first editor of the magazine, interviewed me, and he knew that I had a, a full-time job at the Herald. I, I, I bought my fair, fair house in Miami. I said, are you sure you're moving to New York? Uh, you know, because it, it, maybe you have a bigger salary, but you have to pay more, more taxes, and it's gonna be the same kind of money. And I don't think people in Spanish is going to survive five years. This mm. is a project for five years. And you know, I, I, I trust the brand. I trust the audience. And I work really hard to be where, you know, in the place that the, the brand is right now. And, and I think that's it. I, I, You've been in charge for 20 years now? I, I have been in people in Spanish for 25 years and they don't chief since 2007 yeah mm. so what can i say in the seconds that we have left i think i second everything you said work hard 
Um, never lose your curiosity. Do good to everybody, anybody that you can help, help them. Just, mm -hmm. just even if you think you can't, go out of your way to help others uh, that might need your help. Um, that, that has it. I mean, it gives you great satisfaction, but also pays off in many, many, many ways because reaching certain jobs. It's also a matter of luck. So it's not just that you work hard and you read everything you're supposed to read, but that people remember you. And that when somebody says, I'm looking for a reporter for you, you can say, oh, I have just the right person for you. Um, follow up with the people you meet. I don't want to go to call it networking, although some people call it networking. But for me, is just helping people who come to you for help all the time. And they'll remember you. They'll remember you. That's I think that's hugely important. So I think we now have to say goodbye. Pay it, pay it forward. Yes. Pay it forward. And both of you have always done that, in my experience. Uh, I mean, you've been such great supporters of books and books throughout the years. We've enjoyed presenting you for all of the all of your books. It's been so wonderful to know you as people and friends. And we're just yeah. just thrilled. Oh my gosh, please. It's always wonderful to see oh, you. We love Miami because we have books and books there. Thank <laughs> you. Yes, 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 yes. So I just want to remind everyone watching that if you don't already have your copy of In Search of Emma, all you have to do is touch the green button at the bottom of the screen and uh, we will send ship one right off to you. If you're in Miami and you want to come by any of our stores, we have it there too. Um, I don't know about everyone else, but I want to see you cry, Mandy. So, <laughs> no, 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 I, I no, no, no. When I was talking you about, you have an open invitation to know. read from I your book from at me. some point because I really want to hear you read. <laughs> and I think it's incredible that Emma is reading the book now. That is okay. so amazing. I, Emma is an excellent reader, and and. And she decides whatever she wants to read. You know, uh, we go to bookstores. We went recently when we were in Miami to books and books, and they don't have a budget. We we they are not allowed to buy toys in the bookstore, <laughs> or they are allowed to buy any books and without That's a budget. That's what I used to do too. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. So can't wait to see you in person, both of you. I we'll know. You in soon. I know. Thank you so much for your support and thanks for joining us tonight and congratulations. Thank you, thank you Mandy. Okay, everyone. Good night. Good night.